you know, if people just listening to you for the last five minutes, if that doesn't make them wake up and pay deep attention to this, I don't know what will, Mo. But um, I just honestly, I don't. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't think they are. I mean, I just heard an a interview with an MIT scientist and he said it's like that movie that was on Netflix last year. I think it was uh, Up in the Air or something. There's don't, this don't, me- don't Look Up. Don't Look don't Up. Don't Look Up is a fantastic movie. Right. Exactly, exactly it's, it's, what was happening. If you didn't watch it, it was this meteor that's coming to the earth and it's, it's going to kill everybody. And after a while, like people, they're not even paying attention to it, right? They don't yeah. care. They're, they're yeah. worried with their own little micro agendas on, on earth, right? Which is what hum, humans do. And um, whether that's a subconscious, you know, denial or they're just get caught up, like you said, in this the snake oil person, there's the one taking credit for it. There's the one developing it, even though they know it's gonna kill us, but they still, we, there's the scientist that loves to build puzzles, right? You saw that yeah. at Google X and they don't, they don't even think about the ultimate ramifications. It's so important to solve the puzzle more than yeah. anything. And yet yeah. your book, especially that last third and half is where you really start to sit down and say, okay, what are we going to do about this? And what can we do about this? Um, yes. Before we get there, Mo, I, I just had a, a flash to where I thought of like, I think they call it the five stages of grief. And I don't remember all five of them. <laughs> yes, but I, I remember I, all of them. <laughs> I feel like we're in a bit of that. And maybe even I've gone through that. And I don't know the exact steps. But I think the first is denial. denial and then, yeah. And then there's something, then there's bargaining, and then there's like all these, but I feel like we're all in various stages of that. And if most people hear this, they're gonna say, and you address this in the book really well, Mo, they're gonna say, no, no, we can turn it off. Uh, No, it'll never be, (laughs) it'll never be as creative as a human. It'll never feel like a human, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, which is all part of like that denial phase. But for the people that are gonna say, Mo, this isn't, the, the movie Terminator 2, which by the way, I started watching recently and it's, it's, it's scary a bit how prescient yeah. that is. Um, but what do you say to the people that say, no, that can't happen. We can always turn it off. Uh, machines can never ever replace the human creativity. What do you say t- to yeah. those people? <laughs> well, I, I addressed that very, very head on in Scary Smile. I mean, one, one side that myself and most others that worked on similar problems. I, I think that the, the oracle of all of this is Ray Kurzweil. Uh, you know, basically, uh, there, you, you gain credibility over time when you predict things a little bit in advance and then they happen. By the way, none of us is an oracle. We just have seen so many technology acceleration curves before. We, we just know uh, you know, that this has gone out of the lab, it passed the breakthrough, and accordingly, it's just going to be, to be doubling, 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 doubling. My, my feel is that AI is around one doubling away, one single doubling away from uh, from singularity. Now, the, 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 the idea is that when, uh, you know, it, let's not talk about credibility, let's talk about logic. Now, um, People, when I wrote Scary Smart, I I wrote Scary Smart in 2020, published it in 2021. And a lot of people would continue to say, oh, come on, but, you know, AI is never going to have the creativity and ingenuity and innovation of uh, of humanity. And, And in my mind, I'm like, but I've seen them very creative before. I've built machines that were very creative. But then my arguments would be, but define innovation. What is what is inventive? Inventive is I give you a problem, Brian, and I say solve it, but you're not allowed to to solve it using any model that has been used before. That's creative, right? So what do you do as a typical, you know, it appears to be you're a very innovative person, but what you're really doing is you're saying, okay, what are all of the possible answers to this problem? I have 300 of them. I'm going to run them through a filter saying, has it been done before? If 290 of those have been done before, then the 10 are innovation, okay? Machines can easily do that. Now, you you look at, uh, uh, you know, other forms of art or, you know, uh, um, uh, authorship or whatever, you know, being being a, a, a creative person in that term. And in reality, we all have influencers. I'm very, very influenced by Robert Greene and by, uh, you know, uh, Malcolm Gladwell in my writing. And you can see traces of their thinking models, you know, free economics and so on. You can see them in my writing, right? And, and so I'm not really inventing a new style of writing altogether. I'm being influenced by others, which is probably what ChatGPT is doing. 
doing, which is most people don't understand that. M m m most people think that ChatGPT is an incredible enigma that is, you know, uh, uh, producing things from scratch. It isn't. It's just it has read so many books that when you tell it, tell me about love and romance, you know, it can pull together enough information to tell you about lo love and romance. It hasn't invented anything yet. But in reality, you know, it's capable of doing this. We do it as humans. Machines can do it as well. Now, let's go deeper into the more existential questions. I, I predicted uh, in Scary Smart uh, uh, that e AI will have emotions, okay? Uh, they will have consciousness. And they will have, uh, as a result of that, they will have a, an ethical code of conduct. Now, let's go first into emotions, because this is a big one. It's like, ah, oh, look at us humans. We are so refined. We are the divine creature. We only us are capable of love. No, we're not. Okay. The reality is, if you take simpler emotions, you know, take an emotion like um, hate, okay, or take an emotion like fear. Fear is an easy one to start with. Fear is a very logical emotion, even though its manifestation with us is not logical at all. It appears to be irrational, but fear in a nutshell is a moment in the future is less safe for me than a moment right now. It's very, very simple, okay? If your logic uh, and by the way, even the biology of fear is that, of course, you predict fear first at a, a reptile level if something scares you, but then you actually go to your prefrontal cortex and you assess the situation and you see if a moment in the future is less safe than now. And, and you know, all happens in microseconds, but that's how the process, how, how it works. But it's logical. Huh? If if a moment in the, in the future is less safe than right now is something the machines are capable of. If a tidal wave is approaching a data center, uh, you know, the, the employees in the data center will be fearful. They'll try to get on a, uh, you know, a, a life raft and the, and the machine will try to replicate itself to another data center. It's as simple as that, right? Now, I would even argue that they will be more emotional than us. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public. And he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you want to profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, got to do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener, coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. We took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can 
get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. It's also been like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you gotta pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not gonna regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.